Hi, and welcome to this week's look at the major stories that have impacted the market so far and may continue to rumble on. I'm going to start across the pond with an index. We're going to take a look at the S&P 500 and the fact it's a historical imbalance currently. Now, the E-mini S&P 500 futures are approaching 2023 highs. The daily chart shows the price of these futures has consolidated above a series of lower peaks, one to two to three to four, which obviously normally is a very bullish sign. However, Wall Street Journal analysts have pointed out a huge dependence of the index performance on a very small number of stocks, as namely Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, and Nvidia. Their index capitalization is 30%. That compares to just 20% at the start of this year. E-mini S&P futures are up 12% since the start of the year due to them carrying this additional weight. Okay, good performance. Everybody's pretty happy. However, it is such a small number of stocks. If we calculate the index M so that each share has equal value, then in fact, the growth of this year is, is lower than 2%. And that's the largest imbalance on record. And the record started back in 1990, so we can say since 1990. But obviously that brings a bit of a danger, and that is vulnerability. If the bullish trend, which affects a narrow circle of leaders in one sector, ends or changes to a bearish one, it can and will create conditions for a broad fall across the index as a whole. And in fact, we saw that back in September 2020. The mini S&P 500's futures prices fell by 10% in just three weeks due to the decline in the price of tech stocks. So whilst performance so far this year has been good, there is a heavy reliance on a small number of stocks. A bit like the old adage of, you know, keeping all your eggs in one basket. So do be careful and don't forget your risk management techniques. Keep your eyes on resistance levels, particularly around the 4,300 level. They could give us an indication of what's going to happen next. But as always, there's no guarantees. OK, now we're going to turn our attention to the commodity markets and something that you know, does affect every end consumer, and that's natural gas. We've got the third lowest value of the year just earlier this week, but it is about to be fueled by optimism. The rising cost of living has meant some people, as per the press, particularly in the UK, over the last winter, had to choose between heating and food. We all know there's been a bit of an energy crisis. It's been a real issue for the majority of people across the globe, not obviously helped by sanctions and geopolitical concerns that have affected UK and Europe without a shadow of doubt, and of course, further afield. However, it is worth noting that Russian energy companies, the subject of said sanctions, and obviously involved in the geopolitical concerns, only provide circa 5% of the natural gas used by the UK. Yet prices are very high, and domestic energy providers have been going bust, going bankrupt. they quite a high number in the UK itself. Now, Europe is actually a little bit more reliant on Russian gas. About 40% of their gas comes from Russia, or it certainly did do, up to the end of 2021. So, demand, obviously there. Price increases, clearly quite there. You know, we've all felt that in our pockets. But the price of natural gas in the commodities market has declined consistently since the start of this year. Friday last week, it was down at $2.25 per cubic foot. That's the third lowest in 2023. And overall, a drop of 43% this year. But it's fair to say that's not been passed on to the end consumers yet. None of our bills are going down that rapidly. Unfortunately, that decline may be about to change. As some analysts are predicting, Increased demand from the Asian continent, for example, and a tighter market overall could see these prices increase. In fact, some suggestions talk about futures contracts prices increasing by 20% over the next three months. Now, governments could have a huge role to play in this, with the incumbent UK government, for example, last year cancelling its long term nuclear power station building plans that I had in conjunction with China and Chinese firms. That's taking away some of the, the aim, some of the desire to move away from our dependency on natural gas. Top of that, we have the Labour Party, which is the, 
the sort of the main opposition party in the UK are hoping to seize power and take control and form a government in the next election. They have said if, if they do ascend to power, they will block all new domestic oil and gas developments and invest purely in renewables. It's a very interesting point that we need to take on board here because that effectively could slow down and prolong our dependence on overseas natural gas and thus being, you know, price sensitive to a whole new degree. We've been aiming in the UK for self-sufficiency energy-wise for quite some time and we're on that route, but noises coming out from, from the UK government could hamper that moving forwards and thus could lead to increased demand and increased prices in the natural gas market. And these are common themes that we could see repeated across the globe. So the current natural gas price or value certainly seem to be at odds with analytical views. An interesting market for sure and one that ultimately affects us all whether you trade or not. Okay, we're going to stick with commodities for the moment and again something else that impacts us all and that's the price of Brent crude oil increased after the Saudi decision. In 2022, a downtrend became in the oil market which is shown in the blue channel on the chart which is obviously not great news for producing countries, although benefits end consumers such as you and I and people all across the world. Brent crude hit $72 per barrel in March. That's point number one on the chart. And almost immediately, OPEC plus countries announced production cuts, causing the price to increase towards the upper channel boundary. But the downtrend overall didn't stop. So again, good news for consumers not great for those producers. And during the first in our blog, we mentioned that the warning of the um, Minister of Energy of Saudi Arabia to speculate to watch out in terms of the price in the oil markets, which led to a formation of the rebound. That's point two on the chart. But during the fourth, those warnings ended and there was an official announcement that Saudi Arabia was to cut its production by approximately a million barrels per day. It would fall to nine million barrels per day in June from 10 million in May. That's a significant cut. And actually, you know, if you look back historically, it's a pretty sizable piece of news. But a bullish gap on the Monday open. 77 spot $7 acted as resistance back in May in terms of price increases. And we're currently seeing the price around the $77 per barrel mark. The Saudi energy minister went on to say that markets need stabilisation. So could we see Brent crude in a trading range for the rest of this year? It's obviously quite clear that $72 a barrel seems to be a lower limit because as we approach that figure and get into the 72 big figure, we're seeing production cuts. Could that 77 spot $7 per barrel operate as upside resistance? Well, obviously with everything going on in the world, nobody can be quite sure. But it certainly seems that OPEC Plus are consistently looking to control that price. Okay, finally, we're going to take a look at an equity, a, a stock and share. Uh, we mentioned earlier that increase in the S&P are driven by major tech stocks. And we're going to take a look at Apple. And is the all-time high already over for Apple? Now, obviously, we said S&P waiting huge for these companies at the moment, Apple being one of them. Always been viewed as a bit of a product leader, an innovator, um, good reputation, solid financials, new products being driven to the market. Always viewed as a, as a pretty steady investment without particularly huge peaks and troughs. Now Monday saw an all-time high, circa the mid 180s, $180 per share, but it didn't last long. And in fact, it was back down to 179 by lunchtime. It's currently at 177, high 177. So not a terrible pullback, but a pullback nonetheless. So is that little peak over? Well, why do we have the jump in the first place? Well, Apple have reduced a new VR Web 3.0 Vision Pro headset. Yes, some people are, are calling it a set of ski goggles. However, you know, it looks like an exciting new product in the world of Web 3.0, taking it away from handheld devices, AI coming in, you know, all very, very exciting and clearly driving the market. There's always huge hype and expectations with regards to Apple products, and that is now being twinned with AI, VR, etc. So obviously well received that news of a new product. People think this is great, jump in the share price. But was that just a sudden blip, perhaps based on the excitement of a new product, the hype, a bowl that's about in terms of AI? 
are we seeing a slight retreat? There is starting to come out opposing views when it comes to things such as AI and how you know we need to slow down. Is there some concern building in the markets? Is the fact these tech stocks are being weighted so highly in something like the S&P 500 starting to weigh on expectations for these stocks? And in fact, is the world ready for an age of automatons where we're all working around with glasses on our face? Nobody's quite sure. But let's be honest, you know, tech products, tech innovation has driven the markets for some time. This is a new product. It's going to have a direct impact. But how long will it last? Tech stocks have been pretty volatile the last couple of years. It doesn't really look like that's going to change. So risk management techniques, and we wish you luck if you're trading in the week ahead. Bye for now.